Welcome to That's a Wrap, the channel where I review TV shows, movies, and movie trailers. Today's TV show that I will be reviewing is the Disney Plus Marvel original series, The Falcon and the Winter Soldier, episode two. But before I get into my review of episode two, if you are enjoying the content, Please subscribe to the channel, smash that like button, I would greatly appreciate it. And if you are not caught up with The Falcon and The Winter Soldier, episode two, consider this your spoiler warning. Now, on to the review. So all in all, I felt this episode was okay. There was a lot of, of banter. There was action, definitely. Uh, but I thought it was an okay episode not it underwhelmed me a little bit, but I did Enjoy certain parts of of this episode more than others um, So let's just get right into the first scene. So we, we were we, in the first scene We see the zipper getting sipped down and we find out it's our new Captain America and he's basically at his old high school. He's making the rounds basically, you know how Artists and or when a TV or a movie show comes out the the actors make the night show rounds They basically in one day they they just go or a couple of days They go from one talk show to another to another just basically making the rounds so apparently He's been making these rounds and we are, we catch up with him. I think it's the, the last of it, but he's back in his old, his old high school anyways. And Good Morning America is there. They have, you know, the band playing. I thought that was a, a nice little shot. They let us know that he's a very, he's a, a decorated war veteran. I didn't like the whole boxing when he was punch the punching bag. It's too much of a callback to to Steve Rogers and we are all too much on Captain America Steve Rogers side to allow stuff like this to happen. So I didn't like that scene too much and we cut to a, a different scene where he is using Cap Shield and he has a mastery of it already that I ha that leads to more questions than answers for me uh but it was a cool little scene i mean he's throwing it with such force that it almost made you think like it does is he like juiced up does he have some kind of like you know super you know the super serum on on him or is he some kind of super soldier or whatever but you know yeah that's so all we we see him doing that and he basically is saying how he doesn't want to be when he gets back when we when we go back to him getting interviewed he's like oh i just want to do a good job or whatever and then they cut to bucky looking at this looking at the at good morning america uh on tv and i think i'm safe to say that we were all bucky through this whole episode but definitely in that shot the way you could see he's and he's a great actor as far as facial expressions because you could see him getting annoyed at the fact that this guy was you know just hit the, the mention of captain america steve rogers captain america coming out of this guy's mouth was pissing bucky off and you could tell you know that it was and we were we were all that we were all a uh, bucky in that moment so then we cut to falcon and falcon's getting ready for a mission and we see torres there with them and they're kind of getting ready and we see Bucky, you know, basically walk up to, to Sam and say, why'd you do it? Why, why'd you give up the shield? And again, he's, it was so nice to see that because he was expressing our emotions. Like, how dare you give up that shield? He gave it to you and you just give it away like it's nothing. Even though like, you know, Steve gave it to you, thought he was your friend. He, you know, he trusted you and all that stuff. I mean, he says more of that when they're in that, in, in the, in the last like therapy session when, you know, she forces the therapist, Bucky's therapist forces her and Sam, her, Sam and Bucky to all be in a room and kind of talk about something. But he, he goes a little bit more into that in that scene, but you could see that he was super frustrated. Like, Hey, why did you do this? Like. 
It was your responsibility. It was your, he gave it to you. And we we cut to the trailer part where they're talking about the big three and stuff like that, which, I, you know, I, I agree with everybody. It was funny. But what, before I continue, though, it, it was surprising that, which leads to very promising future on for the last four episodes of this um, miniseries that a lot of the promos that we saw, a lot of the the trailers that we saw for this uh, miniseries came out of this episode. So it means that moving forward, the last four episodes, I, I think we're gonna have a lot of surprises, a lot of reveals. Um, there was definitely, a, you know, in the trailers with Zemo putting on his mask. Obviously, we saw Zemo at the end of the episode, in episode two. But yeah, so I was kind of, pleasantly surprised when I, I as I went through the whole episode that a lot of those trailer shots were done because through this e uh, episode too so it leads a lot to to look forward to for all those fans that are maybe not as enthused as I am you know maybe it's the whole coming off from WandaVision and that kind of hype that we got from a WandaVision, even though this show has been uh, ranking pretty high as far as like viewership on Disney Plus, whether that be from the excitement from WandaVision and us just wanting to see if anything is, is tied or where it's leading to, who knows, you know? Let's just chalk it up to Marvel magic. So anyways, so they're going to, I think it was Germany because that's where they have a an idea uh, where the Flag Smashers are going to be the group that we found out a little bit about uh, in episode one. And again, we, we have a trailer shot where they're in the plane and the bench are going back and forth uh, is great. But I'm going to just say that here. That way I don't sound repetitive. I get that this is a buddy comedy stuff like that. But the the, the, the this animosity be between them, I think it's overdone. There was only one little tidbit and, and just a little bit of this when it was on in civil war it, it, we, we didn't see this blossom or anything like that and i would think that they both of them being so close to steve rogers and especially from sam sam is giving bucky such a hard time and knowing how much bucky meant to to cap i just don't it's not realistic and it kind of takes me away from the story and I get they're trying to make this buddy cop thing, you know, back and forth and ha ha, look, look how much they hate each other. But honestly, it doesn't work for me, but maybe it's just me. I appreciate the humor that it's um, it's coming from that. They, they work good and uh, great off of each other. And we've saw that in other movies, but I just think it's a little bit forced. But that again, that's just my take on it. So anyways, we have, you know, the scene where where Bucky jumps out of the plane and then we see, I mean, a Falcon jumps out of the plane and then Bucky jumps out of the plane without a parachute and he falls all the way down to the ground. And my dummy was, my dumb mind was like, oh, why didn't he die? And I'm like, oh, wait a minute. He has the super soldier serum in him. So that's why he didn't die when he fell off the train. So he wouldn't die just 200 feet jumping off of an airplane. So anyways, they land and they start their investigation into what's going on. So they find they, they find this group and they start, you know, kind of doing a, uh, the back and forth thing, which again, a little bit too much for me, too forced for me. But still, it's great comedy going back and forth. And maybe that's why they're doing it, just to kind of fail. There has to be some kind of tension between those two that will lead to those one-liners and the zingers. I mean, Sam, I'm kind of used to those zingers. You know, he did that a little bit with Captain America, but he never disrespected Captain America. And he seems like a little bit like he's crossing the line a little bit with Bucky, knowing that Bucky has had a really, really tough time in his hundred plus years of life. I thought that that White Panther and White Wolf line from both of them was, was that, that made me chuckle. Like that made me chuckle out loud. Like I, I threw a nice little ha ha in, in that part. Cause I, I did like that. So whoever wrote that line, kudos to you. So anyways, they, they think that there's a hostage. So they jump into action and we get uh, the, uh, I think our only, 
true action scene here. There was a little bit later on in the airport scene, but we get our first, you know, action scene here. And I'm going to say this now. I know the super soldier serum is being thrown out in episode two. I don't think it is. I don't understand. And we found out that there was another super soldier, you know, an older one, a, a black gentleman that we got to see when they, when Bucky has, you know, information and tells us Sam. And we get that line that they were, they were going in this cell cause he was incarcerated after, you know, he did, he, he tried to stop Bucky, but they put him in jail, I guess the US government and they started, you know, taking blood and finding out. I don't believe that that is the cause of what we're seeing. Uh, so we, we, so going back to this, the, the action scene, this fighting scene, they're fighting on top of semis and there's just a group of young men, young men and women. And, but they, they have extra, like they have like superpower they're leaping high and stuff like that and I, I get how it can be you know how you could start saying hey that's super soldier serum because that's all we've seen i'm still holding out and maybe this is my mephisto moment that this is they're mutants this did th this didn't happen years ago this happened a few months ago that they developed these powers that's why they've only recently been doing this. It's, you know, we know that they're a new group. It's not like a group that that's been going on forever. And they're saying, oh, it's because of the blimp. I think that the whole blip and the snap, Dano snap thing is all a red herring. I think these, these are enhanced people that were enhanced all of a sudden. They don't know how it happened, but they got that, that, that power that came to them for whatever reason, all these characters because you might be saying well they all look like they have similar strengths we don't know that we know that that they have they have super strength but all of the avengers had them in some some sort of way thor hulk you know captain uh, uh captain america bucky barnes uh captain marvel whatever they they you, strength just happens to be like a default setting on top of other ones and i think moving forward we're gonna see it but that's just my hunch and that's the hill that i'm gonna die in but anyway so obviously they're enhanced and they whoop our heroes at or they're whooping our heroes butt and then we see this fake captain i, I want to come up with a clever name but i can't come up with a clever clever name for this new captain america so he goes in there i mean he shows up and he starts helping bucky and sam and you hear the captain america theme in the background and it just it gets me mad it gets me so mad that they're playing that captain america song with this dude and i get it they're maybe they they understand that this, that it's gonna rub us the wrong way but i mean he does a good job he's he's, he's helping it and you could it almost felt like even with bucky and sam's face like they were like this dude is really like trying to be captain america and almost they almost felt nostalgic and i like the fact that when uh, the, the, the fake Captain America, I'm not, I, the, the name's still not in my head or, or grabbed in my head. I know it's like his initials are JW, but he throws the, the shield and it hits the, 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 one of the villains and Bucky kind of holds it, but cat, you know, the, the, I was going to call him Captain America, uh, the, the fake cap, you know, kind of takes it away real quick. But in that moment, like Bucky was like, Oh, like I should have just kept it, but it was just so fast. There's some, I, I know this guy is the villain or he's an anti-hero or somewhere, you know, cause he rubs off, he rubs us the wrong way, but there's something fishy there. He is just too strong. He is just too quick. His reflexes are somewhat questionable. And for being just a guy in a suit, he takes a punch from one of these enhanced people and it doesn't affect them as you would think it would affect them. Now I get there's no such thing as injuries in Marvel. I'm I'm calling BS on that. There's something really, really wrong with this new Captain America. So anyways, they, they whoop all four of them and they, you know, our, our, our antagonist, this group of young, of young enhanced uh, people get away. They, they, they beat up our four, our four heroes, quote unquote, and they drive away. So we cut then to the, you know, our villains, our, our antagonists. Actually, before that, obviously, they're uh, all four of them, you know, uh, the uh, fake Captain America and his buddy, uh, I think it's Hopkins or Hap, something like that, I think his name is. 
and Bucky and Falcon are walking, which again, it's another shot from the trailer, from a trailer. And the the fake Captain America offers to give them a ride. They have like the a US military Jeep and they offer, but they deny it. They're like, no, no, they don't want to. But they're like, dude, we have to work together. And they agree to go, you know, I'll get a ride. And he's gonna, the town's like 20 miles away. So let me give you guys a ride. He's being really nice. And it's trying to play, I think, on our heartstrings. But not, I don't know how you guys felt. But I was like, screw him. I wouldn't even have taken that, that ride, but they end up taking that ride from him. And we, we get a little dialogue. And again, he's trying to endear himself to Bucky and Sam, but both Bucky and Sam, more, more Bucky, is, he, has, he doesn't want anything to do with it. He is like, dude, you're lucky I'm not beating your face right now and taking that shield by force. And Bucky, I mean, Sam's then playing like he's he's starting to turn and maybe has an idea like maybe I should, you know, trust this guy. So he's asking questions back and forth. But a, a fake Captain America brings up Steve Rogers name and Bucky just like stop, like stop the car. I'm getting off. And again, fake Captain America, Bucky gets off and, you know, fake Cap starts talking to Falcon and says, oh, I could use you know, Steve Rogers, you know, wingman and, and Falcon was like, yep, there's your mistake and walks out too. And Cap and his friend or fake Cap and his friend, you know, drive off. He's like, oh, let's drive. So anyways, after that, we cut to our antagonist. They're, they show up at a safe house where they could kind of spend the night. There's some, you know, banter. They know, you know, we find out that the governments are looking for them. They're kind of, you know, oh, one one people, one world. Because again, they don't they don't want a a world with borders. And we get a little bit of insight, and, and we see a lot of their faces. And the leader's a very very young girl. I think she's redhead with freckles. I, I mean, I I guess because she has the she is enhanced that it makes her I guess scary. But I don't know. I guess there's, maybe there's a point to it that you don't know, but. I think again, that's why it makes me think that it's not just super, uh, uh, super soldier serum, that it has to be something more because why would, why would she take that? Why would she take a super soldier, you know, injection? Or even if that was possible, why now? Why now is this being done? That's the question that I have. And so there's something about her being the leader. Maybe she was the first one that found the power that she had powers and then went out looking and recruiting for other people that were enhanced and then uh, decided to say, hey, look at how great everything was. Because we find out that, you know, like most, you know, we see it here, like in our country, which is something that this show does really good at, is they were like, look, the government is focusing on the people that came back and the people that were left behind for these five years, they forgot about us. Like, they don't care. Every, every subsidies, all the help, everything that's going is going to the people that came back from the from the from Thanos snap and the people that were here throughout those five years were nothing. We're invisible to the government and we're being left behind. So there's there's a sinister plan. Maybe they're they're stealing some kind of vac vaccines. So maybe they're trying to kill off a bunch of people through a you know through vaccinating them and 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 killing uh, you know half the population of earth so it could go back to the way it was because it seems that's what they want so anyways we get we cut back to our you know bucky and sam and they're back in the in their plane and they're licking their wounds and, and, and their wounds and they're talking about what are we gonna do and then uh, sam you know tells uh, bucky tells sam hey there's someone you need to to meet we cut to well after that we cut to again bucky and sam and they're in some kind i don't know where they're at honestly i don't want to say a, a, a town but it's uh i don't want to call it ghetto either because that's just the wrong word it's a uh, Low income, I guess, is the safer way I could say it. A community, and they're showing up. And there was this nice little scene where these, you know, two young uh, boys are there. And he goes, Hey, you know, they see Falcon and Bucky walking down the street. And he goes, Hey, it's Black Falcon. And he, and, and Buck and Sam goes, Black Falcon. And he goes, it's, he goes, it's just Falcon. He goes, nah, my, my dad says you're black Falcon. And Sam goes, why? Because I'm black. The kid goes, well, yeah. And then he, and then Sam has the best comeback. He goes, well, then I guess you're just black kid. Cause they're two young African-American boys. And I thought that was just 
cute. It was funny. Uh, uh, Sam, his his delivery on those punchlines is. I mean, he's just perfect when he does that. His his ability to 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 have that comedy come out of him. I'm surprised no he doesn't get cast more in comedy roles because it seems to be his forte, and he does it so effortlessly. But anyways. A digression so they show up to this house and sam and bucky are you know while bucky knocks at the door and he asks to see someone a young man comes up and he says hey you know what that person doesn't live here and then bucky's like look tell him i met him through you know and he throws out a name i'm assuming it was back in the days and the young man goes okay let me go see and we cut to from inside and we see uh the a man's back head and they're opening the door and Sam and Bucky are coming in. And this is where we meet. Now we find out that there was a, another super soldier. It wasn't just Steve Rogers. It wasn't just Bucky Barnes. Now we have sense because when they lost Cap, when he was frozen, apparently, I mean, we, we, we know that there was more super soldiers because we find that out civil war. That was Zemo's, I mean, not Zemo's plan to release the, the, the 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 super soldiers but we found out that there was more super soldiers and the formula was obviously perfected that's why i understand why people are jumping to the super super serum i just don't think that's what it is but anyways like di another digression apart so we find out that this there was this super soldier that was sent to to destroy bucky or take down bucky and that he almost succeeded but only succeeded by tearing off half of his arm. But, and we got this great dialogue. He said, hey, we sent a bunch of people after you and or after Bucky and a lot of them, all of them didn't come back. He says, but I was close. And he just wanted to see if it was true. So that's the only reason he let him in. He goes, I just wanted to see. And Bucky starts saying, hey, there's more people. We, I'm just here because there's more people like me and you. He just goes, what? No, I'm done. I don't want to talk about this. And he throws something against the wall. And that's when we see like, oh, like he's still old, but he still has strengths. Which then leads me to more questions. So then when we saw old man Cap at Endgame, was he still powerful or did the serum just already like in the comics run its course? Because we saw this man still had power. I mean, he threw that and it went into the wall. So that he was still strong. So it leads, it leads, it just made me, it just led to so many questions in my head, but that, that I'm gonna tr try to, when I rewatch this and come up with a theory for this, I'm gonna try to come up with a theory as to what, what I saw, but I have so many questions on that. So, you know, obviously he asked them to leave and they leave out of respect because they don't want to piss him off. So Falcon, you know, when, when they're outside of the house, Falcon is pissed. He goes, why didn't no one tell me that there was another super soldier, you know, besides, you know, Steve and you? And he asked Sam straight up. He asked uh, Bucky straight up. He goes, did, did Steve know? And, he, and, and, and uh, Bucky says, no, I never told him. And Sam's like, why? And he goes, look, I didn't want to tell him because he was already, you know, through a lot. And then something that I will give this show credit for is that they're they're uh going head on with racial profiling with racism with the, you know the disparate disparities among not only african american but any minority whether it be african american hispanic asian americans as we're seeing now currently which was what sadly what's going on uh in the headlines with the um, the racism that asian americans are feeling right now in 2021 but the the way that this show is not scared to to hit, hit these things head on what is is something that this show should be commended for uh so in this in this scene we as when they're talking about this cops show up and just because we see that because a black man is talking to a white man, they they automatically tell the black guy like, "Oh, calm down, calm down." And Bucky's like, and Sam's like, "I am, I am calm. Like I'm just having a freaking conversation." Bucky goes because the cop asked to see uh, Sam's ID, and Sam's like, "I'm not showing him his, my ID. We're just here talking. Why did they stop us?" And the cop goes, "Oh, sir, you gotta calm down," and starts reaching for his gun. 
And then he, they look at Bucky and he goes, hey, sir, is he bothering you? And, and, and the disgust in Bucky's face, he goes, he like, looks at him like, what? Do you know who he is? Then the other cop steps in and whispers in his ear. And that's when they realize that they're talking to, 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 to the Falcon, not, not an African-American nobody, but now Falcon. And because he has superstar status, all of a sudden they change. But the fact that if it was just a normal African-American, it would have escalated and how they chose. It was two white officers and how they chose to to all ask Bucky because he was white and saying, oh, is this man bothering you? Like, so I, I, it was, I know for some, it might be a little bit uncomfortable, but that's reality. That's what a lot of people, not just African-Americans. And obviously they're using an African-American as Sam's African-American, but it happens to Hispanics in just the same amount of, of in, 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 in Hispanic uh, communities. It happens all the time. And even if you're, just out somewhere else and, and, and they see you and, and it, it just, ha sadly, that's just too common. But I, th that scene was so powerful in just that. And, but then we, you know, they obviously calm the hell down and they're like, oh, we're sorry. And they go and, you know, the cops go to the car cause they say, Hey, wait here. And we find out that Bucky is under arrest because he violated his parole. Basically he, his mandated therapy that we found out in in episode one, well, guess what? Because he's he's helping Falcon, he didn't step up or he didn't show up. So then we cut to Bucky being released for prison from prison, and her, his her therapist show up, and the therapist, you know, and Sam meet and whatnot. And Sam's like, hey, thank you for getting Bucky out. And she goes, it wasn't me. And then we find out that the person that basically bailed him out or took him out of jail and is ending this therapy thing are fake Captain America. And he basically tells the therapist like, hey, you know what? Bucky's too valuable. He's a valuable asset, which leads to me to more questions. Like what, what's the, what, what, it, what asset is is Bucky to to fake Captain America here and basically says all that therapy. I can't have him, you know, being blocked down on in, in your therapy session. So he don't have to go no more. And Bucky's like, what the hell? I mean, Sam's like, what, whatever, you know, like doesn't trust him. But this is where we get the scene where the therapist tells Sam and Bucky, hey, your final mandated before I release you, we have to have a session. And we have this session again from one of the trailers where they're looking at, you know, face to face and, and she goes, oh, for God's sake, are you guys having a blinking contest or, uh, you know, yeah, blinking contest and, and she snapped for them to blink, which was great. There was banter. But in this scene, again, we found we find out why Bucky is so annoyed with Sam did. He goes, look, Cap trusted you. He gave you he believed in you. And, 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 and you just gave it away. And if any, and, he, and, and, and Bucky tells him straight up, he go to, to, to Sam, he goes, Sam, Steve trusted you. And if Steve was wrong about trusting you, then he was wrong about me. And I was like, Whoa, that was so heavy. You know, that's a heavy load to put on Sam and Sam, you know, without hesitation, he goes, look, you, Steve won't understand it and you won't understand it, but you guys have, you guys have to trust that I did it because I thought it was the best thing to do. And, and, and Bucky has no choice but to say, hey, yeah, you know, in that respect that Steve had for Sam, Steve would have respected that decision. And Bucky now has to respect that decision. Might have not been the greatest decision. And we all, we are all there. The, the amount of hate that this guy, this fake Captain America has, has ground up, I think is monumental. We're being two episodes. He's rubbing us all the wrong way, but he, he Bucky had no choice but to just suck it up. And then we have the end part and they walk out of the precinct and, you know, out of the out of the jail. And we find out that they're sure enough, freaking our uh, fake Captain America and his buddy are there waiting for Bucky and Sam. And they're like, hey, we have to work together. And, you know, if, we, if we're apart, you know, we don't stand a chance. And Falcon basically goes, look, you guys are restricted. You guys have to do it by the books. You guys can't break laws. He goes, we can. So we're like free agents. So for us to make to be friends or, or to team up with you guys, it went it, ma it makes no sense for it makes no sense for Bucky and Sam to, to be tied up in laws and regulations. So he goes. So they're basically walking away. And this is where we get him his reveal, I think, as being the, the evil, you know, Captain America or, or fake Captain America here when he go. He basically tells him, OK, but just a word of advice. 
stay out of my way. And I was like, dude, do you know how quick Bucky could just smash your face in, both of you guys? take the shield and not even blink once but whatever i i leave it alone so we cut then we you know we cut to our to the flag smashers and they're you know transporting the vaccine and we the cops caught up with them and we have a shot where one of them sacrifices himself for the you know the greater good of the group i guess and takes a bunch of bullets and dies which was i, I thought was kind of bold for you know disney plus show to, to go that route and see someone actually get shot up, you know, like he committed, basically he committed suicide and was killed by cops and just shot up, but they get, they, they escape. We cut to Bucky and Sam and we, we get there, they're talking back and forth, like this is what we need to do. And, and they basically come up with the, the plan saying, hey, you know what, we gotta go meet, you know, this person and, and, and Sam's like, no, I know you're not thinking about going to, you know, who I think you're thinking. And basically it's Zemo that they have to go see because Bucky says, look, there's no one that knew any, any more than Hydra or knew all of Hydra's plans, everything about the super soldier serum than Zemo. And then we cut to this beautiful cin cinematic scored that whole scene that we see with, with the music and where Zemo's being locked up. It was very Joker-ish, I like, but I loved it. I loved whoever scored. Mind you, the whole thing, the, the score and, and how they, they placed the music in this thing, my hat's off to you guys. But that one scene from where we get that overhead, I, you know, where we, we're gonna find out where he's at in jail, that, that was just gold. That, that scene alone, I, I mean, again, mwah, my hat's off to you guys. Whoever, whoever vision that was, God, that was so great. And the music, I mean, like, like I said, it was very Jokerish, very Lex Lutherish, very, but very, I love that. I love that high, you know, strings, and it was just beautiful. I, 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 I I can't, when I heard that, I was like, I got chills. I was like, that's great. And we get a scene of Zemo just kind of looking down and then he looks up and we see, you know, great hairdo by the way. And bam, that's our episode. So I, I thought it was okay, an okay episode, but there was very, there was a, a, a lot of parts that were brilliant. There was, like I said earlier, just, too much of the of of the wise cracks back and forth because there was there is no basis from it but all in all i really enjoyed it let me know did you guys enjoy did you guys see the same things i saw or it might be too harshly that you guys think it was great that it was amazing it was a 10 out of 10 if i had to go from a 1 to 10 scale i said i would give this a solid 7 Cause there was, you know, three parts that I yeah, could have probably done without or could have probably been done better. But with, with that being said though, there was a lot, a lot of great moments. And, and one that last part for me was just, ah. that was, th those are my thoughts. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. And like always, that's a wrap.